Hello and welcome to Mensch Life. I'm David Grossman. Doris Epstein. And we're delighted to be back here. Uh, as usual, we have with us today Jonathan Levy. He's with the Council for Economic Affairs and Trade Commissioner. Uh, works for the Israeli government. Uh, and he's working here in a stint in Canada to help foster relations between Canada and Israel, and we'll, we'll find out more about what Jonathan does uh, momentarily. But as we normally do, we've got a couple of things for you today. First bit of news we wanted to talk about is a story uh, that was uh, that was uh, broke by the uh, CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Neil McDonald from the CBC broke this story about um, about the uh, assassination as, of Rafi Kariri. It was not Israel, as, as some would have accused, uh, but it was it was determined that it was actually the Hezbollah. Well, they're denying it, of course, and it's reaching fever pitch. Ahmadinejad was there in, in visiting mm -hmm. Lebanon because of this supposed allegation and uh, they're denying it like crazy. Furthermore, they're threatening to take over Lebanon, to take to foment civil war in Lebanon if it happens that Nasrallah is going to be pinned, Hezbollah will be pinned to the assassination. But the astonishing thing is that Neil McDonald did an investigative piece tracing through the use of cell phones without a doubt that Hezbollah is responsible for that assassination. And uh, and they're denying it, of course. Totally uh, denying it because... But the UN is, is in there, the and tribunal. they're uh, looking pretty closely at this. They're looking very closely, but they're dragging their feet. Well, that's it's, not, it's not new exact, for the UN, but... No, uh, no. Right, but hopefully they'll... they'll but as uh, usual, Israel's being accused of it, and if it's not Israel, it's being a proxy for the United States is being accused. Israel's, Israel was accused. Is, are they still being They're accused? They're still being I mean, accused. Uh, They're still being accused. Uh, but this, this assassination took place several years ago, right? In 2005. 2005. That's what I mean. There was an investigation started. For some reason, the, the uh, material that this brave captain in the police force, Lebanon, Lebanese captain, had sent as evidence was lost. Mm -hmm. So from 2005 till now, they're still collecting evidence for right. the charge. And so it looks it's amazing that this Canadian reporter uh, got the information. You think yeah. the UN would have, would, if they're doing an investigation, they would have been in there. You would and, think, uh, because it's not that hard. It's cell phones. It's simply tracing it right. to cell phones, and without a doubt. Right. But that's not co uncommon for Israel to be blamed for everything that's going on in that world, is it, Jonathan? You said it. <laughs> okay, so now the other thing we had on a couple weeks ago, we had Les Aaron, who's a comedian, and he was uh, teaching Doris how to be funny. I'm too and serious. I think, I You're think blaming Doris me for is, being too serious. I think Doris is getting funnier every day. <laughs> so Accidentally. Actually, given this time of year, Doris has got a joke for us. So okay, here it is. Here okay. it goes. A woman walks into a post office and she asks for 50 Hanukkah stamps. And the guy says to her, what denomination? Oh my God, she says, has it come to this? Okay, 25 Orthodox, 10 Conservative, 5 Reform. And so on. That's a joke. But it adds up to, okay. it adds up to <laughs> 50. Jonathan, we're, we're going to ask you to rate Doris's uh, joke. Uh, I what do think, you think? I think it's uh, very timely to have a Hanukkah joke at this uh, That's very diplomatic. Time. Good feedback. <laughs> <laughs> tr spoken uh, like a true diplomat. I try. Very good. So out of ten? Uh, eight. I'll take eight it. out of ten. I'll take it. So we want to hear from you. Send an email to me. <laughs> we want to hear, really, we do want your feedback on the show. If you have comments about anything you've seen, uh, topics that you want us to talk about, and of course, if you want to rate Doris's joke out of ten, we want to hear it. Uh, but be David good to at me, be David kind. at JewishTVShow.com. We're going to talk uh, more with Jonathan Levy in just a moment about uh, some of the great work uh, that he's doing and that uh, Israel's doing, and uh, some of the relationships that Israel's forging economically with Canada and other countries all over the world. And also later on the show, we have a real treat. We have Cantor Aaron Bensison, mm. who is a wonderful musician. And what, do you, what's the name of that interest, inter instrument he plays, Doris? The tabula. 
Tabula? Tabula. It's like a guitar. Okay. It's 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 Sephardic. Uh, Sephardic, yeah. Okay. So that should be a real treat. So we got a great show for you today. So hang in there. We'll be back in just a moment. Our guest today is Jonathan Levy, the Economic and Trade Affairs Commissioner for Israel in Canada. And uh, Jonathan, I have read this amazing book, Startup Nation. When Livni was here, she said if there was one book she would recommend, it's this one. And to my astonishment, Danny Senior, who I know very well, is, is from Toronto, but he has astonishing insights and comments about about the economics of Israel and why it's being called the greatest concentration of innovation and entrepreneurship in the world. How did this happen from a nation of 600,000 almost all immigrants besieged on all sides to go to 2010 to be such a leader of innovation in the world? Well, uh, first of all, I believe this book has been uh, Israel's greatest ambassador. And uh, the impact that this book has had, and especially uh, beyond our community, beyond the Jewish community, has really? been profound. Uh, actually, the questions that you're asking are exactly the, uh, what this book is, is trying to explain. Uh, how did Israel become uh, uh, such a uh, superpower when it comes to innovation, to technology, and uh, there's no uh, simple answer to that. It's uh, many components, uh, some of it being uh, the very strong uh, workforce and well-educated uh, workforce that we have in Israel. Uh, in the course of a uh, few years, in the 90s, we absorbed one million immigrants from the former Soviet Union, uh, and they came with uh, uh, highly educated uh, degrees, especially in engineering, in uh, doctorate uh, degrees, and uh, this brought our um, ratio of uh, engineers and technicians to be the highest in the world. So we have 140 engineers, uh, technicians per 10,000 uh, uh, people. Uh, and, you know, the, the next country is like uh, the U.S. and Germany are at about 88. So uh, this is uh, greatly due to the uh, uh, immigration that we have had in the 90s. Uh, and we'll probably, as time goes by, we will, uh, because we're not producing, our universities and research institutes are not producing as many uh, engineers. So it will slowly uh, go down, but we will still remain uh, amongst the highest in the world in the area of 80, 90 engineers and technicians uh, per capita. But there are other factors as well uh, that uh, are explained in this book. Uh, amongst them is uh, the military service in Israel, which gives uh, young people uh, at the age of 18 uh, great challenges, uh, great responsibilities, and uh, horrendous the army. responsibilities. That's true. I see people; they look like babies. <coughs> they don't even look like they shave in their commanders. I I but, agree. But there's there's something very unique, I think, about the experience going into the Israeli army. That's that's different because one thing that he points out in the book is that when people come back from serving the Israeli military, corporations are harvesting their talent, their skills, the things that they learned. They're looking at the performance. Whereas when you look at, at soldiers that come back, whether it's Canada or U.S., after uh, service in Afghanistan. Even a year, wherever, even after only a year. These people have trouble fitting into society. They're, they're depressed. They can't fit in. There's something very unique going on in Israel. I don't know if it has to do with the overall culture or something about the training that goes on I in the army. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I, I believe that uh, because in Israel it's a compulsory service, uh, the army has uh, direct access to the full pool of uh, young talent in Israel, and it handpicks the brightest and uh, trains them in uh, computer science and uh, in other uh, electronic uh, training. And 
by the time they leave the army, three, five years uh, later, <coughs> uh, they've not only gotten the experience and uh, training and uh, education that really is relevant for uh, many of the uh, companies. Uh, and many of our electronic industries and uh, uh, high-tech industries uh, were founded by veterans of those units in Israel. Right. What did you do in the army? What did I do in the army? I was, uh, I'm actually still uh, a captain in reserves in the uh, IDF spokesperson's unit. The big difference, according to Startup Nation, is that you have a tremendous amount of responsibility on a lesser level. You don't answer, you don't obey the commands of the officers. You have to think for yourselves. Is that a difference in the armies? Well, I, I believe, first of all, for those of you who have visited Israel, uh, everybody believes he's the prime minister. And everybody <laughs> knows uh, uh, how to do things in a better way in Israel. And that is a characteristic uh, of our uh, uh, people. And uh, this uh, informality, uh, this tolerance, for uh, uh, chutzpah, if you like it, mm -hmm. and uh, people are not afraid to try. There is a tolerance for uh, failure. Is also something that uh, contributes uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship. And as you pointed out, uh, the ratio of uh, of uh, officers to uh, regular soldiers is quite uh, low in Israel. And this is also due to historic uh, reasons when the country was founded and uh, uh, they simply did not have uh, uh, trained officers. So soldiers are uh, uh, being uh, trained to be able to take decisions and to operate uh, independently <coughs> to a great degree. Well, that's, that's also very unique and that could have something to do with their ability to perform in the workforce. I mean, the taught entrepreneurial skills, I if you will, in the Army, because as, at least my perception, I, I've never served in, in any Army, um, but my, you know, wh wh at least what you see and hear on TV is that work, you know, if, if you're uh, fighting in the Canadian or U.S. Army, it's a very disciplined environment. You, you, you obey orders without question. You don't challenge In Israel, but your that, that could work against you. Well, every, you in every army, uh, you need to obey uh, uh, orders. Uh, but I didn't come here really to talk about the Israeli army, well, although, I understand, <laughs> although I understand this we're is of uh, great interest. But it's the attitude. Okay. Let, let's, we're we're, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, let's talk about some of the deals that you're working on, and some of the big deals that Israel is is putting together with other countries, or it's Canada, U.S., or wherever. This delegation um, that you just came from. And yeah. uh, we'll, we'll get pleasure. into that in just a moment. Thank we'll you. We'll be right back. Jonathan, exactly what is your role? What exactly do you do here? Okay. Uh, I represent the government of Israel. Uh, I was appointed as a Consul for Economic Affairs and Trade Commissioner, as you uh, mentioned in the beginning. Uh, and I can uh, split my role into two. On the one hand, I represent the Israeli government uh, in its relationship, ongoing relationship with the uh, federal government and with the provincial governments in Canada. Uh, we have a series of uh, uh, economic agreements. Uh, there's uh, ongoing exchange of uh, delegations and visits. Uh, uh, right now, the relationship between Israel and Canada is, is really phenomenal. Uh, we, we are having many visits, uh, and also on the provincial level, you're probably aware of uh, Premier McGuinty's visit to Israel uh, a few months ago, and we've had visits from uh, Manitoba, from Brit British Columbia. We have a visit next week from Saskatchewan. Uh, we had before uh, a visit from uh, Quebec. So the relationships are uh, really tightening, and uh, uh, both sides are eager to expand uh, trade and economic uh, relationships. And we have a free countries. trade agreement, don't we? We certainly How do. How does that spell itself out, the free trade agreement, well, concretely? 
Uh, the free trade agreement between, uh, between uh, Israel and Canada has been uh, already in place uh, for over 13 years. And uh, basically what this means is that there is uh, equal competition between uh, Israeli originating uh, products and products that are coming uh, from other uh, places and that are made here in Canada. So the idea is to remove all uh, obstacles such as uh, uh, customs, uh, quotas, uh, and basically it opens up uh, the market for uh, competition. And it's based on the competitiveness uh, and uh, uh, quality of the products um, and gives full access on, uh, on mutual uh, consent. Jonathan, can you tell us about some of the deals that you've been working on, some of the, the, the deals that people would want to hear about? I recently heard something about some brain research going on here in Toronto. What are, some of the, what are some of the most important uh, trade deals that are being put, whether it's Canada or, or U.S. or wherever? Absolutely. <coughs> well, uh, this brings me to the second uh, role that I have, which is to help uh, uh, create business and to uh, help Israeli companies in identifying opportunities here in Canada and linking them with potential partners uh, here in the Canadian uh, uh, business uh, scene. So um, we work um, in both ways. We, we are reactive when companies turn to us looking for potential partners. We try to uh, find out who would be a good fit for them, but we also take an initiative and we see areas uh, like in uh, uh, telecommunications, in software, in uh, clean tech, water technology, renewable energy, and we work on these areas uh, to actively pursue uh, opportunities. We bring delegations uh, uh, here and we send uh, delegations to Israel. We promote conferences uh, and exhibitions that are key and enable uh, those links but, to be formed. But concretely, things are really <coughs> happening. Yes. For instance, the McGinty mission last year met with Perez, and from this, a brain institute, a brain cooperation, is starting to grow. That's right. What other concrete evidence do we have that this is working? Well, uh, both sides are working very hard to realize uh, the, the potential that exists. And uh, if you look at the trade figures, they're growing uh, year by year. Uh, we're at about a billion and a half uh, total trade between Israel and Canada Is that uh, an per increase? Annum. It is, uh, let, let's say, due to the economic crisis, we saw a sharp decline in trade, uh, not only with Canada, but also uh, uh, with other major uh, trading partners of ours. But looking at what has been going on in the last uh, nine, ten months, we see a return to the levels before the uh, economic crisis. Do you know what the trade is between Israel and the U.S.? Uh, I know it is significantly uh, larger than, uh, than with Canada. Uh, the U.S. represents a much larger market for uh, Israeli companies. Um, roughly speaking, North America, U.S. and Canada together are about a third of our uh, trade. Uh, the European Union is another third and the rest of the world is the remaining third. So uh, Israel is... is uh, as a small economy relies heavily on uh, foreign trade and therefore signing free trade agreements and the liberal liberalization of markets is uh, key to the success of Israeli companies. What, what's the biggest uh, industry in terms of dollars? Is it telecom? Is it clean tech? Water? Where, where's the most uh, trade taking place? Well, it's, it's very uh, diverse. Uh, in Israel, we don't have uh, a single uh, company or a single uh, industry. It's not like uh, Nokia and uh, Finland, uh, for example. Uh, and maybe this also touches upon the entrepreneurship uh, spirit that exists in Israel. If you look at the trade between Israel and Canada, uh, you will find anything from foodstuff and uh, uh, shoes to uh, chemical, plastic, uh, high-tech uh, pharmaceuticals it's it's very very uh, diverse so uh, certainly the high-tech industry has been the locomotive of uh, of our economy and what has been uh, uh, 
um, expanding our economy at uh, faster rates than uh, any other OECD uh, country. And it should be noted that Israel uh, a few months ago joined the uh, uh, OECD, which is the organization uh, that includes the advanced economies around the world. So that is uh, certainly part of us being uh, open and being uh, part of the uh, uh, global uh, business arena. How does the government <coughs> help in terms of funding startup com companies? I'm thinking of the enormous drain on the military, of the military in Israel. How do people simply, they get a good idea, and, and, and how do they get help to start up? That's a very uh, good question. W one of the things that uh, are quite unique in uh, Israel is uh, close collaboration between uh, uh, the business community, academia, and uh, the government. Uh, and uh, the communication is going uh, in all directions. It's not uh, unilateral, but there's constant uh, feedback and constant uh, collaboration. Uh, if you look at, uh, at uh, research centers, many of our researchers open uh, companies uh, are involved in uh, startups, are commercializing on their uh, research, um, and uh, the government is also offering uh, support programs uh, for uh, young entrepreneurs and for startup uh, companies and for companies that are investing in research and development. And Israel has uh, one of the highest rates of investment in research and development in, uh, in the world. So uh, we are... Investment from the government? It's, it's total investments in uh, research and development. There is governmental uh, support, uh, but a lot of that is being returned back uh, to the government in forms of uh, royalties uh, once the company has sales. We also have a very wide network of, uh, of uh, bilateral and multilateral R&D programs. There is a Canada-Israel uh, industrial uh, R&D fund, similar to a uh, binational uh, R&D fund between Israel and the U.S., and we have similar uh, foundations with Singapore <coughs> and with uh, other countries as well as uh, being part of the European uh, uh, program for R&D, which gives Israeli companies and uh, researchers access to uh, uh, great funds and uh, to consortia of, uh, of uh, research and, and development on key areas. Okay, um, what's the website, Jonathan, if people want to find out more about this? Well, uh, I suggest that they go to uh, www.moital, which is Ministry of Industry, Trade and Labor, M-O-I-T-A-L.gov.il, and it's both uh, English and Hebrew and uh, Arabic, and uh, you can find all the okay. information there. Will you keep us up to date uh, with some, uh, come back and see us again? And Certainly, let us know how pleasure. things are going. Okay, thanks so much for being with us. We, unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, we've got to save some time for uh, Cantor Aaron uh, Bensison, who's brought his uh, instrument. Doris, oh, what's, it, what's it called again? The oud. Oud. He's brought, is that what it, same as o before? O-U-D. Oh, no, the I said oud. something different something before. Something different. O-U-D, well, uh, it's the oud. Okay. Well, whatever right. it is, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's going to be great. We'll be right back. Thanks very much, Jonathan. Thank you. Pleasure. Uh, are we are we ready, uh, Dennis? Okay. Okay. Welcome back to Mensch Life. We are so pleased to have with us Cantor Aaron Ben Sassoon. And, uh, Thank you very much. And his oud. And oud, right. How do you spell oud? Oud. Well, you know, O-U-D. O-U-D. was O-U-D. Uh, well, okay, why not? <laughs> okay. So, uh, and um, it's a very interesting-looking uh, instrument. It looks a little bit like a guitar. Yes, it's a string in instrument. It's one of the oldest instruments. Mm -hmm. It goes back to, you know, to the temple times, and it's one of these, uh, some people say that David, Amelech David the King. This is, was the one of his the instruments that he oh, okay. played. So, so it goes back a long way, it goes and a it's long got long way. Uh, quite a few strings yes, there. About eleven strings, <coughs> and they're doubled. Right. So, uh, and but there's no frets actually. It's a very uh, difficult instrument because it's like a violin. Is right. it's like a mic. That's when you use the microtones and things that are very interesting. 
unlike the Western uh, classical music, which has half tones and whole tones, here you have like each note is like broken into four parts almost. Uh, right. Well, I was intricate, complicated. complicated yeah. I was introduced to your music. I mean, Doris has, has uh, heard of you before, but I was introduced to you when we had um, uh, what was the gentleman's name? We had from Jonah. Uh, a few Marcel, weeks ago. Marcel, Marcel from, yeah, yeah, from yeah. Jonah. Very yeah, nice. Right. Very and we saw very a clip of you in, a, in, in playing. And we saw some right. of that video of you right. at York right, right. playing some of your music. University, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I've heard you in concert, and you bring something to, d to, to this country that no one has ever done before in total. We have oud players, we have people playing Middle Eastern instruments, mm -hmm. but there's a totality that you bring that is very, very unusual, probably because of how you started. You're born in Morocco, aren't you? Right. I was born in Morocco. In Fez? No, actually, it's a small town called Mogadov. It's on the south part of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, the country, and it's surrounded. It was like a little island surrounded with water. It's a beautiful uh, city, and they had many saints in there uh, living in this uh, special people that wrote books and wrote different things on Judaism and uh, quite famous and people go back all the time to their to the tombs to the to their graves to pray and to ask f you know for p different kinds of prayers and one of them is Rabbi Haim Pinto Alava Shalom he was a great the Pinto family also my great grandfather was buried there he was also a, a Kabbalist you know and uh, studied mystical mysticism no, not the way we know it today you know the modern anybody can go into any sure. center and just yeah. learn yeah. but actually you the know real people, the real Kabbalah. thing the real Kabbalah what you really gotta know the, the whole Torah before even starting to know what the word means. Do you come from a family like that? From yes a, I, I from come from a rabbinical, yeah, very, rabbinical family? Very big family yeah and, uh, and they were from father to son, almost to the teacher of Maimonides. They go back. So it's 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 kind of scary to even to talk about it, but it's uh, it is in the encyclopedia, the Jewish encyclopedia. It talks about my fa my <coughs> my my family going down, all all the way down where the, where the city where I was born, and uh, it's a you know, very interesting. I mean, they all were rabbis and. And head rabbi is actually my grandfather was the head rabbi of Morocco about forty years ago. So this it, 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 this kind of background does put a responsibility uh, on me to to expand on the on the cantorial part means you know, on on the prayer part of praying to God for for Jews and all all, all people not just Jews but to bring the essence of music as a vehicle to to bring people closer to their creator and that's basically what i would like to expand my music to if i can do a little bit or bring a little bit light into this world then i accomplished something and then um, that's basically the and you also music. have a commitment to keep it authentic right. there's a lot of music it's called fusion where you combine <coughs> Sephardic <coughs> with right. rock, with right. uh, Israeli, with uh, Fiji. Right, right. Do you right. combine things or do you keep it authentic? Do you well, keep it pure? Well, some of it I keep authentic because you have to keep the authentic because I grew up with that music. But in the, but in the same token, to reach other people who know, let's say, the blues or mm -hmm. jazz, to give them in their own world, in their own language, a little bit of that, I don't see that as, as, as not being pure or not keeping, but it's a total different vehicle to get people to, to so maybe... So you feel, introduce feel. the elements of blues or jazz into right. your into existing... In, exactly, exactly. And that's actually what I'm doing now in New York. I'm working on a record that's doing this world Could we music. have a sample? <laughs> yeah. An advance. Oh, I, I could give you a little sample of that. But
am zu. Ania Incredible. So that's like sort of a, that has a blues element in it. For, very uh, interesting. It's interesting. This comes out. Did you write that piece yourself? No, no, no. I, I make that up on the spot. That's what you just made that. I on just the spot? made that on the spot. Yes, yes. Really? Yes. It's what's what's interesting. The musicians. The words and everything. Yes. <coughs> well, no. The words are from the old text. Let's say from Ben Gabiron Shlomo, you know, Yehuda Levi, which are. Uh, writers and poets from the 12th century, Kabbalist poets. Okay. So the words are so authentic and so deep that they dictate to me on the moment the music that, that, that comes wow. out. Can you yeah. tell us uh, roughly what that meant in English? Uh, it, well, okay. Ani Agid Bikal Amzu, you know, that I will tell, I would be telling the world in, the, in this generation, Bikal Amzu, Sheva Hli Otser, a praising to the per, to the creator that created us. Eli Ram, Eli Ram. Eli means God, the powerful, and 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 the sustaining force in the world. Wow. It just happened that to come out that, that I thought about those. That words. was really incredible, Aaron. Okay, Thank we you. have to take a short break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to hear more wonderful music with Cantor Aaron Bansasun. Hang in there. Okay, we're back here with Cantor Aaron Bensasson. Of course, uh, we've got his uh, email address on the screen. So if you want to take it down, if you want to contact him uh, about uh, gigs or exactly. whatever, whatever. Um, whatever it he's, is, uh, he's I'm, open. I'm here. He's open to hearing from you. And obviously, you travel. You've been traveling to New York and different things. I travel a lot. So one of, one of the things we're talking about in the break was that um, one of the things you like to do is uh, fuse, fusing Ashkenaz and um, Sephardic music, which is very interesting. My, my first wife was Sephardic, and uh, the marriage didn't work out. <laughs> but, uh, but it's a great thing. I mean, I learned so much, and I really miss the couscous. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and uh, her her mother was a wonderful. And if I told you her name, not that I'm hiding it, but then we're going to get into a whole Jewish geography. Oh, her brother, cousin, <laughs> in the synagogue, and blah blah. So you know, uh, but anyway, uh, I think it's a great idea. What 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 you're doing to fuse those two music? Would you Can you give us an example, uh, Aaron? Sure. Uh, okay. To give you an example of uh, the words in Kabbalistic words. I am a servant to you, God. When we open the Torah on, the, on Shabbat, on every day, we, we, we read these words. <laughs> Oh, I wonder. 
studio is going to be uh, standing outside here. Uh, that was incredible. Um, did you just make that up, or yes, that you just, you just made, made up? up? Yeah, except for the for the refrain, the the, the melody, which I composed. I how, how how does this happen? That you, you can do it, you can improvise on I the spot like well, this. Well, that's what a cantus is <laughs> supposed to do. It, it's really you are uh, moved by the words of the, and the text of the prayers. And so uh, and not, not too many cantus could do it. No, I'm sure. Cantors. So this this is a this the text was is a prayer. It's a prayer. It's yes. talking about uh, the that that uh, the richness is really in in, in God and it's the power of God and 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 and, and the right also mentions the power of the Torah that uh -huh. was given to us as as a vehicle to get to know Him, to get to cl to be close to Him, to do the right thing, to help you. Your, uh, your your brothers, your, mm -hmm. your, your 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 people that are in this world to to, to, to help them in a, that, that doesn't matter which category and what religion they are. We are all brothers and sisters. We have to come together. And the music is a strong vehicle to bring people together. And that's why I was together with uh, Marcel Cohen, who has this uh, Jonah, Jonah to bridge know, to bring to bridge to between that's different right. types of people and. Interfaith, an, an interfaith, an interfaith group. group to, 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 to what, make what influence has modern Israel on your work, Aaron? Modern Israel has a lot. I, first of all, I'm a, a totally Zionist, you know, since because my father, you know, always spoke to me about Israel, and we grew up in a home that we spoke Hebrew, so Hebrew was a very, very strong language, and that we identified with. So Israel is is a place where it's it has so much history and so much sanctity in it. The the the, the, the <coughs> temple was there. So I, uh, I mean actually now I'm uh, one of my dreams is to uh, to go there and do something for for Israel. So uh, there is a friend of mine, Rabbi Constantine in Tel Aviv. He's building up a synagogue, and I would like to, I'm going to go and join him slowly, a couple months here, Beautiful. two months here. To, to make parties and make these people, the young people of Israel, because there's not too much Yiddishkeit going no. on in Tel Aviv, you know, so just to bring them. Uh, That's, wonderful. That's wonderful. That's um, wonderful. And if there's people watching, uh, 
who have synagogues, Ashkenaz or Tzfardic. You've you've worked at uh, at Ashkenaz synagogues, even yeah. though you're Tzfardic, yeah. and you really and you bring something so unique, so Thank beautiful you. to bridge those traditions. Yeah. Um, we might be able to get you if we have time to to play one more song, but we're going to give take a break. I'm going to go get you a glass of water <laughs> you. <I'll only> <laughs> because you're working hard. Thank you. It's so okay. we're going to give uh, Aaron a short break. We're going to give you a short break. Come back with us. We have one final segment, and we're going to we're look we're going to look to finish off with the real bank. So hang on, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back here on Mensch Life with uh, Cantor Aaron Bensasun. So we just wanted to mention the synagogue that you're talking about in Israel. It's called the Tel Aviv, the Tel Aviv synagogue. synagogue. The Tel Aviv it's Synagogue. Okay. And if they want to find out more about that or get in touch with you, your, yeah, your email address yeah, is on the screen. Of course, people can also contact me. We have just a couple minutes left, so we're going to go out with this last final tune that was, represents our, our attempt to reach out with our neighbors, it's got some Arabic uh, flavors to right. it, and it should be uh, uh, hopping uh, to Doris and I are going to be dancing over here in our chairs. Great. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks so much for Thank being you. with us and for Thank that you for wonderful you. treat. I appreciate it. And come you. back. I will. Until appreciate next it. week, don't forget to be a mensch. Laila Shalom. Laila Tov. Laila Tov. Shalom. Laila Tov. Shalom. I'm David Grossman. Doris Epstein. See you next week. Okay.